Hey everyone, Sam here, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint light and atmosphere in a seascape painting. And I also give you some tips on color mixing, painting tonality, and painting seascapes in general. Now, if you're new to my channel, then please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to have a go at painting this, then click the link below to the blog post that accompanies this video and feel free to use the reference photos if you'd like to copy them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's roll the tape. I'm working on a 19 centimeter by 25 centimeter linen canvas. And what I've done here is I've taken some loose linen and taped it to a board. I've also made sure to leave at least a few centimeters border around the painting so that it can be mounted afterwards. I like painting on loose linen because it gives you the option of making the painting the size that you want. But it's also really useful if you want to ship these paintings overseas because they don't weigh as much and often don't take up too much space. They can easily be rolled up in a tube. Before I started this painting I gave the linen surface a quick wash with a layer of burnt sienna and then allowed it to dry and the burnt sienna just warms up the painting. I'm using oil paint for this artwork and I start sketching out the composition with a mix of burnt sienna mixed with liquid original and I'm using liquid original mainly for convenience because it dries the paint within about 24 hours. It also improves the flow of the paint. I'm sketching out the composition with a number one round brush and this particular view I'm painting is of the south coast of Wellington in New Zealand. I sell some of my paintings through a gallery in Wellington, so I've painted this artwork with the intention of possibly doing a larger studio painting of it, although I haven't decided yet. But the other main thing with this seascape is the cliffs in the background as a very recognisable landmark within Wellington. And a quick tip for any of my viewers that are wishing to sell their artworks, Painting local scenes is always a good way of selling your paintings. The colours I'm using in this painting include Titanium White, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Oxide, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Teal and Thalo Green. I'm using a range of flat brushes, filbert brushes, rounds and dagger brushes and I've put a full list of brushes in the lesson notes that accompany this video if you just check the link below. So now that I've sketched out my composition, the first thing I do with any of my paintings is to establish all my dark values and shadows first. And for those of you that have been watching my videos for a while will now have heard me say this in every one of my videos, but I hope the repetition helps to give you more of a structure and a way that you can approach your paintings. Having a system to work towards is going to help you create more successful artworks. So I start with the furthest element that's away in the painting and that's the cloud shadows. And this is a mix of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna which desaturates the blue, titanium white to make the value lighter, and then I mix in a small amount of quinacridone magenta which just gives the whole mixture a nice subtle violet tint to it and I apply the paint with a number five flat brush. Now once I've established the basic shapes of those cloud shadows, I go to the next tier of depth within the paintings, which are the cliffs. And what I've done is to add more drama to this scene, I've painted some of those cliffs as if they're in shadow, which on the day that I took these photographs, they were actually like this. So in this case, I want a green element in those cliffs. So for this, I mix ultramarine blue, with some yellow oxide and titanium white. I've also mixed a little bit of quinacridone magenta in there as well, just to help desaturate the green, as the red in the quinacridone magenta is opposite to green on the color wheel, and when the two are combined, they cancel each other out. So the shadows on the cliffs are quite a dark tone, but I don't want them too dark, because if it's too dark, it will come forward in the painting, and I need it to sit in the midground. We're going to be saving our darkest tones for the rock shadows in the foreground, which I paint next, and this is just a simple combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and you can create a near black with these colours. The reason being is that 
Burnt Sienna is actually a dark orange, and orange is opposite to blue on the colour wheel, so when these two colours are combined, they cancel each other out. Now when you combine these two colours with white, you can create some really beautiful, natural looking greys. And it's my opinion that these are the two most useful colours you can have on your palette for landscape painting. Now by painting the shadows first, we can quickly establish a tonal depth within the painting and it's going to make it much easier to add the areas in light afterwards. So we've established the bones of the painting by adding the darks first, let's now get some meat on them. I go back to the furthest zone away in the painting and that's the clouds and I'm going to start painting those cloud highlights. And this is a mix of titanium white with some burnt sienna. Now the burnt sienna makes a nice soft warm orange colour that not only makes the clouds look more realistic but it also tames the white as well so it's not leaping forward in the painting and makes it sit back in the landscape. Now as I've used burnt sienna in my cloud shadows it means the highlights are going to mix in nicely and I can blend in some of those clouds. I've used the same cloud shadow mix to paint some distant mountains there and then I'm going to use my cloud highlight mix to just start painting in where the main highlights of the breaking wave and the white water are in the foreground and this is just a way of economising on brushes. Next I paint the sky which is a simple mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. Then for the lower section of the sky just above the horizon I've added in a small amount of cobalt teal into the mix as well. Now as I took the photos that I'm using for this painting in the morning the sun was relatively low in the sky so there was more golden light bathing the side of the cliffs. Also a lot of those greens are not particularly high in chroma which is another word for saturation. So for this I'm mixing more of a mid to low chroma green and I start with yellow oxide which is a beautiful colour, very similar to yellow ochre, you can use yellow ochre as well instead. Yellow oxide's just a tiny bit punchier. But I mix this with some ultramarine blue, then I round it off with some chronacridone magenta which just harmonises the green, and then I make the value a little lighter by mixing in some titanium white. And also the titanium white will further desaturate the colour. So I don't thoroughly mix all these colours together but I apply them in varying amounts to create different tones and textures on the side of the cliffs. I paint the sea with a simple mix of ultramarine blue, a little yellow oxide and titanium white. And then for the sea in the foreground I use the same colours but mix in a little bit of phthalo green which just kicks up the saturation a little. Now by using these colours in the sea, it's going to sit harmoniously with the cliffs in the background as I've used the same colours in the cliffs. Paintings are more harmonious when they contain common colours, so I try and link all these zones together. Now I spend time on the second part of the painting, marking in the breaking wave and white water that's in the foreground. And it's in this stage that we're going to start creating the sense of light that's in the water. Now seascapes I find are generally easier to paint when they're backlit but the orientation of Ophiro Bay which is where this painting is located is actually south facing and as we're in the southern hemisphere it means the breaking waves are going to have the full sunlight on them rather than behind them. So what I've done in this painting is created a spotlight effect on the waves so the breaking wave, which is the focal area of the painting, is in the full sunlight, whereas the very foreground is in the shadow of a cloud. And this is a cool effect that you can utilise in seascape paintings. If you want to see some examples of this, then check out one of my favourite historical seascape painters whose name was Frederick Judd War, and he painted lots of seascapes that had this type of spotlight effect. So my lightest tones are going to be in the white water of the breaking wave and I'm going to be saving those lightest notes until the very end of the painting. So for the foam and white water that's in the foreground that's in that cloud shadow, I mix a combination of titanium white with some ultramarine blue and a little burnt sienna. And again the burnt sienna is going to desaturate that blue. 
But also, as I've used it in the clouds as well, that's going to tie those zones together, which is going to create more harmony in the painting. Now, when painting this type of white water, I've found that flat brushes and bristle dagger brushes are very useful for communicating turbulent water. And when it comes to paint brushes, I just think it's all about using the right tool for the job. I try and keep my brush strokes more gestural and broad during the blocking in stage so that my painting has more of an impressionistic feel. And then once it's dry, I then begin layering on detail. The loose painterly brush marks in the beginning stages just help to add an aliveness to the painting overall. The rocks in the foreground are the darkest values to be found in the painting and this is a mix of mainly ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and titanium white for some of those lighter values within there. In the foreground of a landscape this is where we're likely to find our darkest and lightest values. Whereas when we move into the distance of a landscape a lot of those tones start to drop out so our darks are not quite as dark and our lights are not quite as light. Also the same applies to saturation of colour. You're more likely to find your most saturated colours in the foreground where as we go into the distance a lot of those colours, especially greens and yellows, fall away and become desaturated. So keeping in mind these concepts when you approach a landscape painting can really help you in creating successful artworks. So at this point of the painting I finished up the blocking in stage and I needed to let it dry. And it's during the blocking in stage that you want to decide whether you're happy with the way the painting is going. So are you happy with the tones and the colours? Is everything sitting correctly and are you achieving that atmospheric depth? Now when I've just blocked in the painting I just check that everything's working and when I'm happy I begin the next stage of the painting of adding some details. So here I let the painting dry and I start adding more highlights to those clouds and again I'm using the same colours that I was using in the blocking in stage which was a mix of titanium white with burnt sienna but I've used less burnt sienna in the mix so that the value is lighter and I can start painting in some of those cloud highlights. I still need to make sure that the clouds are sitting in the painting where they're meant to be so making sure that there's enough burnt sienna in my cloud highlight mix that that happens. I make a bit of a tonal adjustment to the sky and clouds but not too much and it's more finer brushwork of mixing in the cloud highlights with the shadows and modelling the paint to create soft looking clouds that are hovering just above the cliffs. I add some more detail to the cliffs by mixing in some lighter green hues to them and this time round I'm making the value of the green lighter. I'm using the same colours that I was using during the blocking in stage which is mostly a mix of yellow oxide with ultramarine blue, a little quinacridone magenta and titanium white but then I've also increased the saturation a little by mixing in some phthalo green. Once I've finished with this zone of the painting I spend much of the time working on the breaking wave and the white water in the foreground. And what I'm doing here is I'm building up layers and each time I do I'm just adding lighter tones although essentially I'm using the same colours that I was using during the blocking in stage. Now in order to make this seascape more engaging and dramatic I'm going to be saving my lightest values until the end of the painting. So for the highlights of the breaking wave and especially the area that's in the full sunlight, I still mix in a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna into my white mix. However, I'm now using smaller number two flat brushes and applying those highlights more sparingly than the previous layer. For the water that's in the foreground that's in the cloud shadow, I'm still adding highlights as well, but these are obviously gonna be darker than that of the main breaking wave that's in the full sunlight. I'm able to refine the shape of the breaking wave by mixing in more of the sea colour that I was using earlier, which is a combination of ultramarine blue with a little yellow oxide and phthalo green. I've also painted a few foam patterns on there to add interest to the wave. I still continue to work on the blanket of foam in the foreground where the waves just collapsed. Keeping in mind that this water is in shadow, so I'm making sure that there's plenty of ultramarine blue in my mix. 
The burnt sienna that I've mixed in there is going to desaturate it as well, but I don't use too much of it as I don't want to risk the water looking muddy. I found that bristle dagger brushes are really great for communicating foam and spray within the breaking white water, and that's what I've been using here. Now as I'm working through the painting I'm slowly adding lighter layers to the water, and then I got to a point where I needed to let that part of the painting dry again. So this is where I started working on the rocks in the foreground, and as with the blocking in stage I'm still using the same colours, a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and then titanium white which I mix in to create some of those lighter tones within the rocks. I don't really want to draw too much attention to the rocks, as this painting is all about the sea and the cliffs in the background, and as the rocks were mostly in shadow, there wasn't a massive amount of detail that you can see in them. The rocks are more helping with the composition, leading the eye towards the breaking wave. I use a number two flat brush for some of those finer details within the rocks. And again this is ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and titanium white for the reflected light that was within the rocks. You can create some really natural looking rock tones with these colour combinations. Now once that water was dry again I was then able to add some more lighter layers to it to help define the form of the water. My brushes are getting smaller and I'm now using a number zero round brush. And I'm just painting a few highlights on the tops of some of those ripples and the foam and white water. I'm still keeping the white darker in value. I add further detail to the main breaking wave and again this is a mix of titanium white with a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, as I'm still holding off on my lightest values until the end of the painting. And I'm using a quarter inch dagger brush to communicate turbulent water as that wave barrels over. I'm starting to apply the paint a lot more sparingly now which is going to help communicate more of a three dimensional form within the water and the breaking wave. I finish up the painting by adding some more colour to the face of the breaking wave. And what I've done here is I've still used the same mixture of ultramarine blue with yellow oxide and a little phthalo green, but I've used a bit more yellow oxide in the mix just to make that green a little warmer. Now I've reserved my lightest values until the end of the painting and this is pretty much going to be around the breaking wave as this is the main focal area as well. It's also going to stand out more as well because this is where I'm going to be using my lightest values. And it's just a simple combination of titanium white with a small amount of yellow oxide just to warm up the white. I'm really applying those final highlights sparingly with a number zero round brush. I even paint a few sparkles on the water to make it look like it's glistening in the sun. Now I always like to finish up my seascapes by painting a couple of seagulls which I always think adds more atmosphere to the painting, it just gives it a little bit of life and adds to the whole story of the scene you're painting. Once the painting's finished I then come to my favourite part of the painting where I peel off the masking tape which takes away all the paint and distraction around the side of it so that it truly frames the painting and you can see what it actually looks like. I really enjoyed painting this artwork and I think this painting is going to look really nice when I get it mounted and framed. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also feel free to leave me a comment. Now if you'd like to learn more about painting then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samuelerp.com where I have a painting blog full of painting tutorials that you can copy and also I have full length painting tutorial videos available for sale from my website. And you can also access all of those painting tutorial videos by subscribing to me on Patreon for $5 a month. You get instant access to all of my full length painting tutorial videos and a new video every month. And I'd like to thank everybody that purchased a video from me or subscribed to me on Patreon because it helps me to carry on making painting videos for you. 
I've put all the links in the description below and if you'd like to see what artworks I'm working on then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and again I've put all the links in the description below. So thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video.